In this video, I'm going to use science to help improve your aim and break your current aim labs or Kovac records. If you'd like this video to yield the best results, then be sure to stick around until the end of the video. So first things first, let's get some of the basics out of the way. To start off, let's talk about your death space. If you have plenty of death space, then this isn't going to apply to you and you can head to the timestamp seen on screen right now. If you have a very limited amount of death space, this will also limit your sensitivity range. If you have a small death space to play in, then you'll be forced to play in a higher sensitivity as you have less room to move around. Around. This is important to keep in mind when trying to pick out your sensitivity, as you may want to try out my sensitivity, for example, which is on the slower side. But if you were to play on my sense without the needed desk space, then you may find it very difficult as you won't have the needed room to move around. So try to make as much space as you can. That way you have more freedom with your sensitivity. Your mouse pad plays a big part in this as well. You may have a large desk, but a small mouse pad. If you're happy with your mouse pad, then once again, feel free to head to that timestamp seen on screen right now. Be sure to get at least a medium sized mouse pad, even if you don't use all of it. Like I said, you just wanna have the freedom to play on any sensitivity that you'd like. If you're looking for a good mouse pad, I'd personally recommend the SkyPad 3.0. It's a medium sized mouse pad made of 100% glass. It's super durable, so it won't break if dropped, and it'll also give you the absolute best glide out of any mouse pad you can buy. It's known as a fast pad, so you have little to no friction while moving your mouse across the pad. This can be great for faster sensitivities, but it's still great for lower senses as well. Pair it up with some third-party mouse gates and you're in for a great experience. It's a bit on the pricier side, but it'll actually save you money in the long term since it never suffers any degradation of quality like cough pads do. Basically, if you use a cloth pad, over time, you'll need to purchase a new one to keep the original quality, even if you wash yours frequently. So see it as sort of an investment. You can use the link in the description with my code SHOCK to get 10% off your very own SkyPad. If you prefer a cloth pad though, I would recommend the HyperX Extra Extra Large. This is my second favorite mouse pad behind the SkyPad, but do know that after a few months, you will have to buy another one of these to keep the original quality. I've probably got about a dozen or two dozen of these mouse pads. So going the SkyPad route will definitely save you some extra bucks in the long term. Moving away from mouse pads and onto mice and more specifically your DPI. Your DPI is completely personal preference, but the industry standard amongst most pro players is either 400 or 800 DPI. If you've already picked out the right DPI for you, then head to the timestamp seen on screen. I personally play on 800 DPI, but I've played on 400 for the majority of my career. I would highly suggest you pick either of these, either 400 or 800. If you choose to play on a much higher DPI, but with a lower in-game sensitivity, it'll be much harder for you to convert your sense to another player's. This makes it harder to experiment with different sensitivities. So again, I highly recommend you stick to either 400 or 800. For your mouse itself, I'd highly recommend a wireless mouse such as the G Pro Superlight, which is what I use. Wireless mice are a lot more natural to use as you don't have to worry about the cord, but they do come in less shape variants, so keep that in mind. All right, so now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's get into actually improving your aim. So first things first, you need to be sure that you have learned the proper crosshair placement as well as recoil control in game. Being good at an aim trainer is one thing, but that won't translate as well as you think it will if you don't have the core game mechanics down already. Take the time to learn good crosshair placement, recoil control, and the common angles, and that alone will improve your performance in game tenfold. As for the aim trainers, either aim labs or Kovacs will do. I personally use both, but I prefer Kovacs as of right now. So let's get into the science of this all now. Go ahead and open a second tab on Google and type in metronome as seen on screen right now. This will basically produce however many beats you set it to each minute. So if you set it to 100, then it will beat 100 times in one minute. This is what we're going to use to improve your aim. Now, if that seems a little bit crazy, just stick with me for a minute. For me to explain how this works, first let me explain the core issue that people have when using aim trainers. You're going too fast. Yep, that's literally it. People see guys like tens hitting crazy amounts of targets super fast and they try to replicate it when they aren't at that level yet. At the end of the day, your accuracy is all that matters. So if you're hitting a bunch of targets but your accuracy sucks, then it won't go very far in an actual game. So that's where the metronome comes in. You'll set this to 100 beats, for example, and you're gonna try to match the pace of it in your aim trainer. So for this specific example, we'll be using something like Grid Shot in Aim Labs or Tile Frenzy in Kovacs. Start slow, something that's very easy for you to match the pace of the metronome, and try to get around 95% accuracy before you turn the speed up. I promise you this will vastly improve your scores in both Kovacs and Aim Labs, and once you get the hang of it, you won't even need the metronome anymore. 
as you're able to go to higher and higher speeds on the metronome you'll see your aim improve along with it you're not trying to look flashy for youtube you're trying to improve your aim so focusing on accuracy here will help you do so from there if you guys are still struggling you guys should really try to focus on what scenarios you're having trouble with the most i'd recommend doing a bunch of different tracking scenarios target switch scenarios precision scenarios just a bunch of different scenarios in either kovacs or aim labs and try to figure out what you're struggling in the most i think aim labs does the best job in this case showing you what you're struggling in as they have the ranks to kind of show you that you're you know you're really good at tracking or you're really bad at tracking so maybe start with aim labs and kind of see what you're bad at and try to focus those scenarios it's also important to pay attention to what game you're playing if you're playing a game like warzone or apex legends then tracking is going to be a lot more important than it is in say rainbow six siege siege is all about precision and you know crosshair placement things such as that so you don't need to track as much especially when your targets die in a single bullet warzone or apex for example where you maybe need a whole clip to kill someone that's where the tracking comes in so it's really important to take a look at your actual game and ask yourself what's more important and what should you be focusing on don't take that too far where you're not focusing on the things that don't matter as much in those games as everything together will help your aim no matter what so don't focus on one thing just because you know for example tracking is really good for apex so i'm going to only focus tracking you don't want to do that you want to make sure that you're actually focusing different scenarios and that you're building up your aim all together the metronome is going to help you the most with certain you know certain situations such as grid shot where you're hitting a target and then another target and another target it's not going to help you so much with tracking the metronome is to teach you to be more accurate and to slow down and pace your shots more so i hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did then be sure to let me know down in the comments if you guys showed any improvement after watching this video or broke any of your records in kovacs or aim lads then return the favor and like the video and subscribe for more content like this thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day Axe, Clint. I swear I hammer repelled. No, I don't. Pushing piano double, I think. What's he doing up here? Mob is always baiting his teammates. Where's last? Josh, let me get the last. Very good. No, where is that? I don't know where he is. Yo, in one, in one, Chuck. I'm coming, I'm coming. He's in the back one by pillar. Last now. Starting at him, he's still back pillar. He's pushing the door, he's pushing wide. On your desk. Thank you. Nice. Josh, go. Josh, go. You're so good, Chuck. Oh my god. <laughs> Mindless champion plays. Mindless champion plays. That's the title.